When it comes to my reference material, even with photography, I often will not use the one image by itself. I like to manipulate my images. So because I'm doing this with the group, this is the paint together of peonies that we all did, I wanted to use the same images that I used with the group, but I took them and used Photoshop to change things around a bit. So I took the image and I flipped it, I reversed it, and then I added other peonies to it because this, I, I caught these peonies at close to the end of the season. A lot of the peonies were already starting to die. And so I also had images from another bush and combined the two together. Actually, I combined a, a few of them, but I wanted to, I had to make sure that the light source was still consistent between the different peonies. Otherwise, it, I can make up for that just from my knowledge of peonies and light and dark and how much experience I have with flowers, but that just makes things complicated. It's much easier if I find flowers that where the light source is already the same direction and the same basic time of day, same kind of conditions, and I want to keep the, the species or the, uh, the specific peony the same throughout, but I still have a lot of leeway in what I can do with my reference material, with my images, with my subject. So I took several peonies from, from a different bush and put it in with this peony bush, this main peony bush. And then I also took peonies from this particular, the original peony bush and moved them over. And Photoshop makes that fairly simple. Just copy it, move it over, as long as I have it on a different layer, I can erase all the things around it that I don't want. I can keep a few leaves on it that I want to keep with that peony. I can take leaves from another bush and put them in a particular place within my overall reference photo. I can change and move just the same way I can almost with paint. It's a lot easier with paint than it is with an image because I'm just not that fast with Photoshop, but there's so much that can be done with this. With digital photography today, it has made things so fast, so much faster and easier than it was 30 years ago. Feel free to take whatever elements you need to make the composition the way that you want it. Have fun with it all. There's a lot of exciting things that we can do with these images today. Since I have the trees, the sky, the building, all kind of mingling together in there, I'm going to start with a tone underneath that can harmonize all those together. And so that's why I grabbed some of my, well, I, I grabbed a little bit of the Cad Lemon and then mixed some of the Transparent Oxide yellow and, and orange into that. Notice also that my red color that I started with is fairly simple. It's just quinacridone red mixed with some a little bit of white and a little bit of the cadmium red in there because the quinacridone red by itself tends to be a little bit of a cooler red because it it doesn't have mm, how do i describe that it's not it doesn't have the kind of blue that the alizarin crimson has in it that makes the alizarin crimson so much darker but it is on the cooler side of red so adding a little bit of the cadmium red into it warms it up just a little bit and gives it a, a little bit darker, stronger color to it than just the, the quinacridone by itself, especially when I start adding white into the quinacridone. So I'm, when I add white, I'm already taking a cool color as it is and adding, making it even cooler with that white in there. And I want to have my mid-tones, my mid-values, I, I use the word tone, sorry, all the time, and that might not always make sense to you, since uh, sometimes I'm referring to the value <laughs> that I'm putting down. Sometimes I'm referring to the color. Sorry, I don't get very specific, as specific as I might need to for you every time. But in this case, I want my mid-value color, which is that darker red that I put down, I want that to be warmer because the, when I start putting the bright reds on top, 
just by necessity, since I'm adding white to them, they're going to be tend to be cooler than on the cooler side of the spectrum. So having that middle value color, the darker value of the reds, be a warmer tone, that's right there what I was talking about. That's the warmer and the cooler. Warmer red, cooler red. And those will help to work well together. So this is just a matter of deciding where I want to place my leaves. So I have, as you can see, a combination that I'm forming now of bigger and smaller shapes. I'm using basically the same color in most of those leaves. I'll change up the color in a lot of them as the painting progresses rather than right at the start. But I'm taking a lot of those and just using that same color, I'm, I'm making a variety of sizes and, and then placing them in, in spots just to start filling in all of that jumble of leaves that's in the peony bush. And I'm placing them in different directions, not all facing the same, the same direction. It's that constant idea of, of randomness. I don't want to repeat the same direction throughout. I don't want a pattern. I want to switch it up. And now I can start taking some of that color and creating holes in the, in the foliage with the sky coming through there. And much of that is just a matter of trying to make the shapes of the foliage more interesting to give it variety so it's not just a straight blanket across there. I don't want just a straight line of foliage going across. I want to break that up and have different sized shapes within the foliage itself. So now these little areas with that uh, tree branch right there that comes off of the peonies and up over the, the overlaps the shed behind it. Notice I didn't just put in a tree branch. I came in, it's got some, some blues in it, some reds in it. It's a, there's a variety, even though in, in that, small little, that small little element within that space, I could have just had one constant color on there, but I like having a variety of colors and values, especially adding little bits of red, as long as the red doesn't pop out too much towards the viewer. I don't want it to scream at the viewer saying, look at me, look at me, but I do want it to be enough that when the viewer does look at it, as the viewer is led around and through the painting, that there's something worthwhile there for them. So a little spot of, of red, even if it's subdued, can really enhance the colors around it and make it feel colorful, even if there isn't a lot of bright, saturated color all around. Sometimes it's just a little spot or two of saturated color or what seems relative to everything around it like saturated color. Ah, there we go. That, that white area that I talked about that suddenly was so apparent that wasn't apparent before now i come in and notice it and tone that back down so it's not visible anymore and then christy came in and guided my brush to show me what needed to be done about that area of shadow that long rectangular area of grass shadow i didn't want too bright of color in there because it is in shadow but I wanted it to be obvious it was dirt or something else, not grass, right there. Just to break up that shape, break up that color. And that was it. That was all she wrote. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that painting and that you have a great time painting your own peony masterpiece.